once upon a time, a woman who wanted so much to have a tiny child, but she did not know where she could get one. So she went to an old wise woman and said to her, I would like very much to have a child. went home and planted the barleycorn. And immediately a large beautiful flower grew up which was quite like a tulip, with its petals still tightly closed, just as if it were still a bud. and she kissed its lovely red and yellow petals. But just as she kissed the flower, it gave a loud pop and opened its petals. In the middle of the flower, on the green velvet stamen, half the size of one's thumb, so she was named Thumbelina. For a cradle, she had a pretty lacquered walnut shell. For a mattress, blue violet leaves, and for a coverlet, a rose leaf. There she slept at night, but in the daytime she played about on the table where the woman had put a plate with a wreath of flowers around it. She could also sing, and her song was so sweet and beautiful that nothing like it had ever been heard before. Ugly toad jumped 
in through a broken pane of glass in the window and on to the table where Thumbelina lay asleep under the red rose leaf. That would be a beautiful wife for my son, said the toad. And so she took the walnut shell in which Thumbelina was sleeping and jumped back through the window and down into the garden. stream. Near its banks the ground was marshy and muddy, and here the toad lived with her son. Oh, how ugly and hideous he was, just like his mother. Croak, croak, was all he could say when he saw the lovely little girl in the walnut shell. said the old toad, and then she might run away, for she is as light as swans down. We will put her on one of the large leaves of the water lily in the stream. It will be like an island for her, for she water lilies with large green leaves floating on the water. The old toad swam out to the farthest leaf. She put the walnut shell with Thumbelina on it. tiny little creature awoke quite early the next morning. And when she saw where she was, she began to cry most bitterly, for there was water on all sides of the great green leaf so that she couldn't get ashore. The small fishes which were swimming about in the water felt sorry for Thumbelina. They gnawed through the green stalk of the water lily leaf with their teeth. So that the leaf drifted down the stream, carrying Thumbelina along with it. Far away where the toad could not reach her, sailed past many places, and the little birds who sat on the bushes and saw her sang, What a lovely little maiden! What a lovely, lovely, lovely little, 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 little maiden! What a lovely maiden, maiden, lovely, lovely little, lovely maiden! white butterfly kept fluttering round about her. 
and at last he settled down on the lily pad because he had taken such a fancy to Thumbelina. with Thumbelina standing on it. Just then, a big June bug came flying past and saw her. The next moment, he had caught hold of her with his claws and flew up with her into a tree. Meanwhile, the green leaf floated down the stream and the butterfly with it, for he was fastened to the leaf and could not get away. Oh, how frightened poor Thumbelina was when the June bug flew up into the tree with her. She was greatly distressed about the beautiful white butterfly whom she had tied fast to the leaf, for if he could not free himself, he would starve to death. But the June bug did not trouble himself about that. He sat down with her on a large green leaf gave her the sweet part of a flower to eat, and said, You are very pretty, although not at all like a June bug. said she was ugly, the first June bug also at last believed it, and would have nothing more to do with her. They flew down with her from the tree, and put her on a daisy in the middle of the great forest. in a dry leaf, but it did not keep her warm, 
and she shivered with cold as she looked for shelter. Outside the forest was a large cornfield. And there Thumbelina came to the door of a field mouse's house. It was a little hole under the stubble where the field mouse lived in comfort and ease. She had a whole room full of corn, a kitchen, and a beautiful dining room. Poor Thumbelina stood at the door and asked, Tell me stories, for I'm very fond of them. And as the days passed, Thumbelina did what the kind old field mouse asked of her. We shall soon have a visitor, said the field mouse one day. My neighbor is even better off than I. He has large rooms and wears such a beautiful black velvety fur coat. If only you could get him for a husband, you would be well provided for. He is very rich and very well learned, but he does not like the sun or beautiful flowers for he has never seen them. But Thumbelina did not feel at all interested in the neighbor, for he was a mole. But when the mole came to visit, she sang Ladybird, Ladybird, Fly Away Home and many other pretty songs, and he fell in love with her because of her sweet voice. The mole had just dug a long passage through the ground from his house to the field mouses, and he took them on a walk through the darkness. As they walked, he said, Don't be afraid of the dead bird which lies in this passage. It must have died quite recently when winter had begun and been buried just where I dug my passage. When they came to where the dead bird lay, Thumbelina could see the swallow with his beautiful wings firmly pressed to his sides. The poor bird must have died of cold.
turned away from the bird, she bent down, pushed aside the feathers which covered his head, and kissed his closed eyes. Perhaps he is the little bird who sang so prettily to me during the summer. That night, Thumbelina could not sleep. So she got up from her bed and wove a large, beautiful coverlet of hay, which she carried into the passage and wrapped round the dead bird so that it might keep him warm as he lay on the cold ground. spring came and the sun began to warm the ground, the swallow said goodbye to Thumbelina, who opened a hole in the ground above the passageway. The sun shone in upon them so brightly, and the swallow asked, Will you go, you go away with me? But Thumbelina knew the old field mouse would be much grieved if she left her without saying goodbye. No. I cannot. Then farewell, farewell, you kind and pretty maiden, said the swallow, and flew out into the sunshine. Thumbelina stood looking after him, and the tears came into her eyes, for she was very fond of the poor swallow. All summer long, the tiresome mole in the black velvet coat came to visit. And he was always saying that when summer was over, then he and Thumbelina should get married. But she was not at all contented, for she did not care in the least for the tiresome mole. When the 
the sun rose, and every evening when it set, she stole out to the door, and when the wind blew the corn aside so that she could see the bright sky above, she thought how light and beautiful it was out there, and wished so much that she could see her dear swallow again. You ought to be thankful for such good fortune. The mole arrived to fetch the Molina. She was to live with him far under the ground and would never be allowed to go out into the warm sunshine. For he did not like it. Lena was distressed at the thought of having to say farewell to the beautiful sun. Goodbye, you bright sun. She stretched her arms toward it and threw her arms around a small red flower close by her. She heard the twittering of a bird over her, and she looked up. It was the swallow who happened to be flying past. He was so pleased to see Thumbelina. She now told him how unwilling she was to marry the old mole, and that she would have to live far under the ground where the sun never shone. She could not help crying at the thought of it. The cold winter is approaching, said the swallow. I am going to fly away to warm countries. Will you come with me? in the day. 
ditches and the hedges grew the most lovely green and purple grapes. Oranges and lemons hung from the trees in the woods, and the air was fragrant with myrtle and mint. Then they came to a blue lake, and under the magnificent green trees stood a palace of dazzling white marble built in olden times. Vines clustered round its high pillars, and on the top were many swallows' nests, and one of these was the home of the swallow who carried Thumbelina. her little hands in joy. The swallow flew down and put her on one of the large petals of one of the flowers. But what a surprise awaited her. She saw a little man sitting in the middle of the flower with the most lovely golden crown on his head and the most beautiful, clear wings on his shoulders, while he himself was no bigger than Thumbelina. He was the angel of the flower. In every flower lived such a little man or woman, but this one was the king of them all. whispered Thumbelina to the swallow. The little prince was greatly frightened at the swallow, but when he saw Thumbelina, he became so pleased. He took off his golden crown and placed it on her head. He asked her what her name was and if she would become queen over all the flowers. She said yes, she would. lovely wings. These were fastened to Thumbelina's back, and then she was able to fly from flower to flower. There was much rejoicing, and the swallow sat up in his nest and sang to them as well as he could.
countries back to Denmark, where he had a little nest over the window in a house where the man lives who writes fairy tales. The swallow sang to that man, From him, Hans Christian Andersen, we have this story. Yeah. Yeah. I'll turn the air. 